Welcome back to Common Ground Radio. This is episode 43, and I'm super excited to share this conversation that I had with the incredibly talented, creative Dylan, otherwise known as Nancy Phil, who's an aspiring artist with a vision and a desire to execute from manifesting dream shoots with the likes of Leon Bridges to not letting fear or limitations get in your way of making what you want to create. Dylan shoots in the format of film, shoots stills in 35mm, documents motion through Super 8, and he sits down with me today to have a beautiful conversation about his journey and his story. Do you want to start off by telling us where your journey began? and uh, where you are now. Yeah, for sure. Um, first of all, thanks for having me. No worries. Um, the drive out here was amazing. I was just like very calm, very at peace. It's a beautiful place out here in, uh, in Nuriba. Yeah, yeah. In Nuriba. But yeah, to take me back to when it all first started, I guess I would have been, would have been 14 and like every aspiring uh, beach grommet on the Gold Coast had a GoPro yeah. and uh, yeah distinctly remember, uh, remember getting I think it was the GoPro Hero 4 Silver and yeah me and my mate Sam Pittman we would go down to the beach most mornings at like 5 or 5.30 and uh, literally like just be in the shore break and have like the 10 burst mode and <laughs> get like uh, photos and of the shore break and yeah, Burley, because I grew up in Burley. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's what kind of, I guess, started my career in photography slash vide- videography slash the arts. Yeah. Were you doing like anything at school, like art? What were you doing photography at school at that time, or were you? Was it just a random thing that you wanted to start doing? Well, my my mom had a Canon six hundred D, and then I just like picked that up off her, and I would film my mate surfing. Yeah. And then. I kind of got sick of it because I just wanted to be out there with my mate surfing. So I started, yeah, I started surfing. And then and I always had the GoPro and I'd, I like would really look up to like, at the time, Clark Little, yep. Little Mungerman, he was a Gold Coast guy. He'd always run like events, mm. um, supporting like the youth and the community of aspiring photographers. Cause there was a pretty strong um, group of like really young kind of photographers on the Gold Coast. And yeah, I guess that's what started it. But there was like no real, like my mom's a, she's a principal. My dad's like a land developer. So there's no real arts or kind of, you know, creativity of such in like the family house. It's not like they're all like writers or stuff like that. that. No, so, and I went to a very like strict school. So it was kind of like, I really, it's it's honestly, I still wonder how I got to where, I, like what I'm doing right now, yeah, because yeah. like everything that was kind of created for me was not to do what I'm doing right now. It's very yeah. like regiment, structure, and like end up, you know, doing something in commerce or banking, you know, yeah. and a lot of my family do that, so. That makes sense. Yeah, it's kind of not like the design route that was kind of set up for you. You've kind of found your own and Mm -hmm. gone your own unique way. Do you think that that has definitely, well, I definitely believe that has benefited you basically off the way that you live your life as a Mm -hmm. friend, I see, and the way that your work shines opposed to other people's and stands out because of the life and the joy that you share and capture. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you think that having been raised with a family that does more arts and craft might have not pushed you to go so far? Yeah, I, it's, it's a good question because um, I think you do need discipline in the creative arts industry. Yeah, I think if I did end up going to maybe a less regimented school or something, I could have gone a whole different route. I could have been probably maybe a little bit too loose and just off with the fairies, yeah. but I, I can keep myself quite accountable when I know I'm like off with the fairies and when I'm actually like, you know, got a regime and yep. things like that. And obviously growing up in Australia, sport was mm. something that like was really, um, you know, I aspired to be an AFL player till I was 16 and then anyway. aspired to be a uh, professional water polo player from 16 till would have been 19. Yep. So. Sick. Yeah, I think that whole sport element is what, you know, that whole psychological thing of like doing something daily 
consistently. Mm. Um, for example, water polo, we were training like 11 times a week. Wow. And it got to a level of like, which you can then translate into photography or videography. You, mm. you practice the art every day. And then there's, for, to bring it back to water polo, there was at the end of the four months, the championship game, which is kind of like finale of the amount of hours you put in yep. those 11 training sessions a week to get to that destination. So I think sport is what has um, created a good regime for me in my yep. creative life now where I can, I can pull myself up if I'm spending a little bit too much time enjoying life or, yep. you know, and vice, I'm, I can always, I'm a pretty fun, you know, uh, enthusiastic person. So I can always like, fun's not hard for me to create, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, um, the regime something that is definitely needed for me. Yeah. Um, I can definitely relate to that in yeah. order to, I feel for us creatives to at least start from the beginning and make a bit more of a business into a career ourselves without a lot of either support or financial help or mm -hmm. someone mentoring us the whole way through it in a sense where it's very hard without those disciplines for a lot of people to make it. Because in our day and age, a lot of people try to make the career that you are now having and the career that I've been fortunate enough to have where they're trying to make their, if they already have a job or don't, or they're at uni leave to make that creative lifestyle change to make that their business and also their own life so they can live off that. It's usually quite a difficult challenge without the discipline of managing yourself, understanding mm -hmm. that you should be working most days or some days at least and understanding that balance that you need to have to make it real. 100% yeah and it's uh it's a dance because yeah like I've I haven't even been doing this full time for a year yet yeah, like wow. self-sufficiently mm -hmm. um it's been about probably eight months now mm -hmm. um and yeah like there's no there's no rules like every day <laughs> I get to create you know however my day goes yep. which is pretty amazing um but yeah I've been I've been in a full-time job I've been in like um all aspects of it and I know what I thrive in which is doing my own thing yeah um I'm just more like I know the feeling of when you're you've got eight hours in the day and you're locked in like you're controlled for those eight hours mm -hmm. a day and I just hate control I mm -hmm. hate to feel controlled like I want to feel free yeah because then I feel like that's when you can create something that no one's ever seen before because mm -hmm you your mind so open your mind so free it like will look at the person who's working like for example this morning i'm driving out of suffolk and i see this worker he's got this like distinct cowboy hat on glasses and i was like i'm inspired to do a shoot from the way he looked and i go down to suffolk see like this like almost desert looking like white sand with this like stick I, I, this huge log i don't even know how it got there but it's just like combining that and you know i feel like when you're regimented in life you don't look at those little smaller things mm. where you can be constantly inspired by yeah and that's kind of something i take into my work is i i like to be inspired by the environment hence why we're in beautiful byron bay very fortunate here it's a, a beautiful place that i've been fortunate enough to live for a little time now and mm. very appreciative of and now that you're back you're seeing it in a different life do you want to talk about what it was what the journey was from that Hero for Silver to starting a business for yourself to starting that full time. Yeah. And how you got from there to there, in a sense. Yeah. Well, to condense it down, because it, it, it's quite a journey. Yeah. yeah. The, the, I fell out of photography um, when I was probably like 17 to pursue like water polo. That consumed pretty much all of my life. Like, yeah. is uh, I think one of the characteristics I've always had is that obsessive nature of wanting to be, you know, at the top of what I do and also just being very passionate about what I do. Yeah. Like it's, I'm either a hundred percent in or I'm not in at all. Yeah. And that was like school, you know, like I'd thrive in some subjects and then I'd, you know, I would just flunk out on others. Yeah. So I guess that whole mindset to going from that hero for silver to where I am today, you know, I guess when I came back from the States cause I did water polo. So yeah. Really, when I was like 19, funny enough, full circle, I um, did an interview. I was actually doing a podcast. Oh, no way. Because I, I used to run podcasts. Really? Yeah, yeah. 
haven't even told you this. So. No, no. Yeah, so he's doing podcasts. Yeah. And this was my like little way, because I was, I was so lost with life, like I didn't know what I was doing. And I was just interviewing anyone I could and yep. predominantly around business and mindset. And anyway, I did a podcast with this guy called Julian Mitchell, who was the owner of Lifecycle. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure if you heard the brand. Yeah, yeah. yeah they've uh, had brilliant. yeah they've had some good success. Yeah, and yeah, I did a podcast with him, and then after the podcast, he's like, "Oh, so like, what's going on?" And I was just like, oh, "You know, got to right now. I really want to move to Byron." He's like, "Well, you know, I had a like a marketing content creator dude just left. You want to move into our place, and you can you know have an internship." Yep. And I was like 19 at the time, I had nothing else better to do. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, let's do it. And moved to Byron and essentially my role with Lifecycle was content creation and funny story. This was when I realized like how, you know, you just got to make things happen, mm. which is essentially like the industry we're in. Like no one wants to hear the excuse as to why you can't do it. It's like, all right, figure out a plan of how you can make it work. Yeah. So the this was probably my first major, I guess, you know, proving point as to, you know, uh, you know, because you're always trying to impress those people, Much you know, like when you're first starting out, you want to have a good impression. So you just, you're just trying to think of how you can create the best you can. Mm. Anyway, I knew the camera that I had at the time wasn't going to do it to create something <laughs> good. So I literally like, I think I used up all the money I had at the time to buy I think it was a Canon 6D Mark II. And the shoot was on at, I think it was on at 7.30. And I bought it the night before. And I drove, I drove, I left Byron at 4 a.m. to drive to like, it was in between Gold Coast and Brisbane to get the camera and then come back. Oh wow. And I just made it, I think it was like seven o'clock. And I'm using it for the first time. I think I had an auto <laughs> between you and I. I was, I'm pretty sure I was like saying, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I had no clue. And and luckily it turned out great. It was actually one of their top performing ads for like a full year. Wow. And it was like, it was just in Byron Bay and she was just doing an unboxing. The girl's name was actually Shale. I'm not sure if you oh, yeah. yeah, Shale. So yeah, that was, that was when I realized like, I've always kind of, I can make things work. Yeah and like thriving in those kind of high pressure situations. So then, yeah, with just, that was kind of the start. I did that for about a year and a half and then just felt like I needed to grow and put myself constantly in uncomfortable positions. And the next step was, I guess, moving to Sydney, which would have been literally about 12, a year and two months ago. So it was in May um, and I was inspired from Fashion Week. I yep. went down to Fashion Week and then I was just like, yep, I'm gonna move down here. Sick. Caught up in May, within two weeks I'm moving in with him. Yeah, I lived there for the past year and I got into like nightlife photography, mm. but I always wanted to do it a little bit differently than what everyone else was doing. Cause yep. I saw the digital and I was like, all right, how do I kind of weave myself into this pretty like it's a pretty controlled environment. Like everyone's kind of got their go-to people. Yeah. It's quite hard to break in and yeah, yeah. You know, it's uh, a crowded market. It's for a very photographers and yeah. those people, and especially in Sydney, for sure. Yeah. So, but me being me, I just said, "Fuck it, I'm <laughs> going for it." Like, let's go. And then I just meet with as many people as I could, and just I guess tried to do something quite unique and different, which was like film photography, and then like I get some some jobs and then it taught me like the understanding of relationships like relationships are everything um when you're running your own shop which i think when you're working for someone else you don't fully care like let's say it's 501 yeah, you're not yeah. going to respond to an email yeah. when you're running your own operation you'll respond till like 11 p.m at night most definitely so there's a whole different um ball game in showing up and i know i show up better when i work for myself than yeah. someone else and I can confidently say that and like just know that that will be the case for the rest of my life. Mm. So yeah, then I did these like cutouts and that's what kind of got me enough work to essentially be comfortable living in Sydney, making enough money to just invest into creativity. So I'd just be trying to do as many test shoots as I could every week. Yeah. And I'd just like yeah, constantly be cycling that whole thing. I'd make most of my money on the weekends doing nightlife. And then during the week, I'd just be trying to work with as many models as I possibly could to test and improve and 
yeah, I find my way of uh, getting better at what I do is just testing, like yep. testing. I, I don't expect anything. Eventually I want like uh, creative directing slash modeling to take over nightlife, but right now nightlife is still, you know, a very good stable for me. So yeah, that's kind of been it from the Hero 4 Silver to, you know, where we are yep. today. Which is such a unique journey going from all of that and how do you feel that when you were having that full-time role did that give you the I guess the comfortable hearing from your story the comfortable state to like progress your skills and fail with Mm. a bit of security behind you yeah for sure I think also the time of what was going on in the world like it was during COVID so there was also this element of you know I'm kind of, I'm, I'm in Byron, so yeah. like, it's pretty good life, like, we'll, we'll live in like, in this crazy, crazy house with about six of the seven of us, and they were all doing their own thing, and I think that's what kind of was the catalyst for me being like, I want to live life on my terms, yeah. and not have someone around me, because as sad as it sounds, like, there'd be instances where they'd go out and do things, and then I would have to still be working. Yeah, yeah. And I hated it. I was like, I was like, I need, I want to be out there adventuring. Yeah. So I think through that, I know that feeling and that feeling of like, you know, not being able to fully have freedom. Yeah. And that's something I really value. It was like time freedom. Yeah. Is like having the ability to, you know, like for example, do this at like yeah. three p.m. on a Wednesday. Exactly. It's a Wednesday. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. It is. <laughs> It's wild, isn't it? Once you start to value that, because I'm very similar myself, how much your life will change and how much more things mean value to you as opposed to what they did before. Mm. For example, for me, sometimes saying no to a job now, which is a long lesson that has taken me nearly five years of my career to Mm. learn how to say, because I've always wanted to help people and I've always wanted to you know, do the right thing by people, is sometimes not worth my time or my effort, even if it pays well, because at the end of the day it can give me time like this where I can be working on something that's more creative more fulfilling and more rewarding for me especially in the long term if it can bring more creativity to my mind I can be served as a better creativity a creative person so then later on down the track when I'm hired for my just for my creativity because I've hired someone else or they know they're coming to me for my creativity that's where I excel and it's because I'm starting to get to a point where I'm trying to have my own style and be unique in my own way and I feel that you have done the same in such a short amount of time which has taken me a long amount of time Mm. that has been very impressive to watch from at least the distance to see do you think that that has sparked from you living in those conditions or just seeing the world like where do you think that that's come from I uh, appreciate that. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a daily battle for sure. And I think the, the one thing I can probably pull it to is doing, doing as many like test shoots and creative shoots because yeah. I know when I am doing a shoot and for example, when I was working with the previous employer and there'd be no creativity to it. It'd just be like do an unboxing and just like film them keywords obviously you know it had its time and place but yeah for me i was just like i was like this is this is just fake yeah you know like and i think through my daily use of journaling i journal every day awesome and i just try and understand like what's going on in my head you know the good the bad the ugly whatever and and also understanding like my dreams and everything. Mm. This kind of, kind of sounds a bit woo, but literally just like trusting whatever vision I come up with, and then actively taking you know action with it. And obviously like being smart about how and who I you know associate myself with as well. Mm. I, I really value that. Like the people I'm around. So to draw it back to like the the environment, you know almost push you into that I think for sure like certain environments have allowed me to see like because I I learned the business side of things I think I didn't learn much creativity when I was you know in the two years because essentially I was living 
with Julian to so seeing how he operates and he's yeah. just like a very it's a CEO brain he's yeah, a yeah. CEO brain and he's a creative brain they're two different things and I think playing in both of them is something that it's a struggle when I'm you know learning yeah and I know which one I better perform in which is definitely the creative brain but this is kind of a bit off topic but with the use of ChatGPT, it's allowed me to better communicate in an email format yep. um, my ideas. And I think it's the best thing for like, for, you know, us and like small business owners or like in one man operations mm. um, to really hyper growth. Um, back to what you're saying, like as how I've done in a short period of time, yep. I guess. Yep. It's just that ability to, you know, hyper network as well yeah like that's another thing is like you've got to be oh, 100 relentlessly yeah. meeting people um and also having a, a vision as to where you where you want to go and i can tell you a good story of what i think like yeah, emulates that in like in the coolest way in my head 100 is back to like probably my proudest thing i've done creatively and like in this whole journey so far the past year and a half since taking it seriously would be working with Leon Bridges oh, and and like <laughs> the moment of like when I realized I wanted to work with him is because I loved his music adored it like mm. coming home you know Texas Sun all those sun all those songs have so much soul in it yeah and like you can be cooking dinner hearing that song it just straight away takes you to a whole like changes your whole state you just feel relaxed love is just like oozing throughout your body and like that's something i really enjoy mm. i'm a bit of a hopeless romantic <laughs> and so i saw he's coming out to australia anyway i'm like emailing his you know management no response yeah and i was like for some when i'm like got this like mindset of like i'm gonna make this work i don't care like I'll think of creative backdoor ways to try and like get to that, you yep. know? So I reached out to him on Instagram. He's got like 800,000 followers. I was like slim chances of him replying, didn't reply. And then I figured out who his photographer was. Yeah. And then so she was American. And I was like, all right, instead of just typing a response, let's voice memo. Cause I know nice. Aussies have got a, Wait, Americans like Aussies. Uh, most definitely. So I was like, all right, okay, I'll you know, send a voice memo. So I sent a voice memo and she responded. And I was like, no, fuck, mate, this is crazy. And, and then um, she, I was like, can I just assist you on one of the shows? Yeah. I'm in Sydney. I think at the time, you know, I was still waiting for some invoices. So there was no way I could fly to Melbourne yeah, and yeah. like, you know, put up all that. So I was just like, the Sydney show is pretty much all I got. And it was at the Opera House. Oh, wow. And she's just like, oh, I spoke with Leon. They don't know who you are. And obviously in that caliber, category of people, there needs to be that trust element. Oh, 100%. So unfortunately she was just like, yeah, I can't have you, but you can have a ticket. And I, I didn't want a ticket. Like I, I wanted to like shoot. Like that's all I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, all right, and then I saw, and then I saw that they were having an after party at Shell House. Yep. And I was just like, I am, I'm figuring out how I get into this. So I, I messaged the marketing girl of Shell House to be like, hey, I'll shoot the night. Yeah. And then she was just like, oh, we've already got other photographers there. It's all good. And I was like, oh, geez, this is like, <laughs> this is constantly battle down, but I'm still going. Yeah. Anyway, I still rock up, like get my way in there take photos, send send them to the photographer because I ended up like connecting with her at the night. Yeah, so she yeah. was there and I was like, hey, and she's like, oh, you made it. And I was like, and that was so lovely, like yeah. super nice because obviously on social media, you, you don't really know how someone is feeling. Oh, 100%. It can kind of be like, because in my head, sometimes you can always think negatively and be like, oh, they're probably like, fuck this little annoying yeah, grommet, yeah, you yeah. know, go away. But like, that was so lovely. And she was like, here, have a drink. And I was like, yeah, that's way. Yeah. And then I'd take the photo, send them to her. And she's just like, yeah, Leon vibe with them. And I was like, that was sick. That's all you wanted. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. all I wanted. And then I followed his right hand man, Zeus. Okay. And anyway, fast forward, I just got back from the States a week ago. Yeah. And I was over there for two and a half months. 
And I think it was like week seven of being over there. I see it's Leon's birthday and he's having a birthday at this venue called Nice Guys yeah. um, in West Hollywood, which was literally around the corner from where we were staying. So I was just like, all right. Yeah, I was literally just like, all right. Um, I text Zeus. I was like, hey Zeus, um, just wanted to see if uh, you need any photos for tonight. And he's like, yep, yeah, come around. And it sends this address. And I like yeah. put in the maps and it's like this house in the Hollywood Hills. What? And I'm just like, this is sick. All right, let's do this. And then I it was like, be there at 9.30 and I was like, all right. So I'm like making sure I got my batteries for my contacts, G1, that's what I use. Yeah. That's for all my nightlife stuff. Got my handy cam. And then literally I'm like, looked in maps, it's like 10 minutes away. I'm like, sweet, all right, I'll leave, you know, at 9.15, get there at 9.25, five minutes to spare. And I'm notoriously late. Time on, but I'm be there. Anyway, 9.10, I'm just putting in some new batteries because I didn't want the batteries to like yeah. die out. I didn't know what charge they're at. So I was just like, I'm gonna buy some new ones, put them in there. Anyway, I'm gonna put them in there. At the bottom of the contacts, G1, I literally got it right there. There's like this little size of a five cent piece where you put it on the bottom to keep the batteries in there. And as I put the batteries in there, I've somehow misplaced the five cent piece. Oh, and this yeah. is at 9, 10 PM. And I freak out. I'm like, no way. This is the biggest opportunity in my life. Like this is <laughs> just relying on me. Like I am, I've dreamed of this moment. Like I'm across the other side of the world. Like yeah. this is happening. And then I pull up the rug, like literally, you know, move everything out of the living room. Like, I think I'm going crazy. Like, this is now, it's now 9.25. I'm oh, no. supposed to be there in five minutes. Can't find it. 9.35, can't find it. Oh. 9.40, I've just got my head on the carpet right now. I've just been like, oh, I've just missed out on the biggest option in my life. I call my roommate and I'm like, Am, I've just like, cocked it. And she's like, I don't care if you have to skip the whole like house, you are finding that thing. And I was like, yeah, true, all right. <laughs> and I just go try and find it, spend another 15 minutes. It's now five to 10, I'm like oh, 25 minutes late. Like I'm like, I'm done. They're just, they've forgotten about me. I call my mom, I'm like, mom, I've just screwed up. Like, it's my biggest opportunity. Just looking for a bit of sympathy, I yeah. guess. And, and then she's just like, oh, I'll be all right. You know, like every mom does, yeah, yeah. you know, you'll be fine. I was like, you don't, <laughs> you don't get it, mom. Anyway, I had the call, I'm like, mom, I'm just gonna go to 7-Eleven and get a, get a, like some sort of sugary thing to like simmer in my, you know, <laughs> sadness. And um, as I go to get in the car, sitting on the seat there and I'm like, oh my God. And it's 10 past 10, I'm like, grab my cameras. No way. Bolt to the, to the house, like get there, it's in the Hollywood Hills, like literally to picture it, it's like the movie Once Upon a Time, you know, oh, like the one yeah, roads, yeah, yeah. that's where I was. And doorbell, no one's answering. I'm like, all right, they must be already at the venue. Drive to the venue. And then next thing you know, I see that they're there. I mean, I, I rock up to the event, sorry. And literally the doorman, the classic LA doorman, oh. he's like, what's your name, buddy? And I'm just like, ah, oh, Dylan Nicholson. And he's just like, you know, on the list. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you're kidding me. And then I was like, oh, I'm taking photos. And he just, he like points to the sign. No photography. No photos. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is not looking good, is it? <laughs> and then I was just like, all right, I'm calling Zeus. Mind you, this is 10.30, so I'm an hour late. Oh, like, no. this is like- Not a good look. Not a good look. I didn't even want to turn up. I was like, <laughs> I've got to do it. And then next thing you know, I see this big, you know, big dude, all, you know, he's got this black leather jacket on, you know, he's got braids. He looks like, this is Zeus. And he's got his glasses on, like you can barely see the dude. And he's just like really, yeah, quite an intimidating figure. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And he's like, and I'm just like, all right. And then <laughs> I walk in, he's like, where you been? I was like, dude, long story short, I, my camera malfunctioned, but I'm here, let's go. And then he's just like, bro, I just want you to enjoy tonight, have fun. Um, we'll get the photos back at the crib after. Uh, we can't take any photos in here, but there's an open bar and you just have fun. And I'm just like, all right. <laughs> and I'm walking in here and it's Leon's private birthday party. And I don't know anyone. Like I'm talking to you, I'm just by myself. 
Reliance Soul just literally way out of its like way out of my league. I'm like, what am I doing? Anyway, as every Aussie would, just parks himself up in the bar <laughs> and just like starts yeah. having a couple spicy margaritas, to, you know, build, muster up a bit of you know s- speech or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then next you know, I'm chatting away, meeting people. It was great. And then next thing you know, we go back to the thing, the crib, and then they're all there, and I'm just taking photos. I'm like, this is it. And then. Um, I actually didn't even end up getting a photo of Leon, which is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I got a photo of everyone else, but he, he kind of just vanished. I, I don't know where, where he went. Yeah. Um, but then uh, the day after, Zeus was like, thanks so much for coming out. Really appreciate it. And I was like, sick. I'd love, and I was like, I'd love to shoot some Super 8 with um, Leon. And I mm. sent him like a clip. And then, because that was like my dream. I wrote it down uh, six weeks when I was in this park near our place, I was like, I want to shoot a music video with Leon Bridges. And I was like, it was actually reading the book, The Creative Act by Rick yep. Rubin. I wrote it down at the end when he's like, notes. I wrote it down and I was like, I don't know how the heck it's going to happen, but I feel like today could be the day. And then literally he's like, yep, vibe with it. Come to this address, put that address in. It's not Hollywood's Hills house. Except this time it's like run to the Hollywood sign. I'm like, this is, this is a dream yeah, like, to yeah. create with one of my like idolized artists, have my Super 8 camera, have film ready to go. Like I'm like, this is the moment. Mind you, that morning as I'm driving back, I've left my phone the Uber. So <laughs> I've literally got to um, use my laptop on maps to get to this oh, place. No. <laughs> because I didn't have a phone. Yeah, yeah. So I was using like Instagram DM on my laptop, my desktop, and then I had to bring the laptop in the passenger seat to, to get to this place. Like I'm telling you, it is like behind the scenes, it's a shit show. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. we are getting there, we're getting it done. <laughs> like, <laughs> I get there somehow on the maps and rock up, Zeus straight away pulls me in, um, to the like environment and then pulls me into the room and then in the room it's a recording studio and turns out the place we're at was the producer of like Harry Styles, Taylor Swift, wow. like all the major artists in Hollywood. And literally I'm taking like photos of him recording his latest album and I'm just like, what is life? And Next thing you know, he leaves out and he's kind of got a bit of an entourage, like people are chilling by the pool. The Hollywood signs right there. I'm like, this is everything I've dreamed for. Like, this mm-hmm. is the moment. And then he's just like, I was like to Lee, I'm like, you know, well, he was just playing his guitar and I was just like, it'd be cool if we get a shot of you like walking down the Hollywood, you know, um, with the Hollywood sign in the background, kind of like you're thinking and thinking of your next song. And then I remember directing that and shooting him on Super 8. And I was just like, cause I, I knew I had to like take control and be like, yep, yeah, like this is a moment. This is yeah, like yeah. the grand final for me. You know? <laughs> like you, all the training building to this. Building to this. And then, yeah, I just capitalized on it. And I felt like I did the best I could at that time with my current level. Um, and yeah, that was probably, I guess, the story that best emulates, you know, what um what it's kind of been like it's an amazing journey and yeah. even that experience that you've just shared with us is incredible that you've gotten through already mm. and watching it from my perspective knowing you as a friend before and then seeing you go over there and execute that and then you saying that you journaled that too is just a credit to yourself for having that belief within you and you know having that non-fear situation where you were you know racing after through all those moments and <laughs> even reaching out to him when he was coming to Sydney, you know, or finding a way to contact is something that you're going after your dreams and not leaving them just half-hearted, which was, no. which is amazing. And why I think that that opportunity came to you as opposed to anyone else. Yeah, I was very, very grateful for the whole, the whole opportunity, the whole experience. It was something that was like very special. It, to be honest with you, it was, it was definitely like a signifying proud moment in my life. Like. Mm one of those moments where you know you you obviously as creatives you create a whole bunch of work yeah but there's a difference when you're like immensely proud 
you know like you could most definitely you and you know the feeling like, i definitely do yeah it's like um there's being proud in your work but then there's like this level above proud where you just like you almost tear up like yeah, yeah. You, you're just kind of being through such a such a roller coaster to get there most definitely and you 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 believed in yourself a lot mm. but you didn't really know if you could achieve it you exactly know? um I think the biggest belief part as well about what you're explaining there too is you can be, it can be the first thing that you show if someone says, oh, what do you do? And like you show, they want to see some of your work or whatever if they're not into photography and stuff. And they might not understand or respect what you've done because they might not know him or, you know, might think that some of your other photos are cooler or whatever. But deep down in you, that is what you are most proud of. and what you love the most as mm-hmm. what you've created so far and it just excites you to create something almost better in the future which is so amazing to have like I remember being at the beginning of my journey and it was always something that goes down the line in your career but looking back at those in the past which was only two weeks ago for me when I was trying to explain a story to someone and then show them a photo I was scrolling back through my whole feed and I posted like 700 plus photos or videos or whatever so I was just like scrolling for ages going past all these moments remembering that feeling of being like at that point in my career I was like I'm so proud of this this is like mm-hmm. if anyone asks this is what I'm going to show them on the yeah. sly and be like yeah. yeah this is pretty cool this is what I do like <laughs> blah, blah, blah. and then it slowly progressed and it's like it's how I guess we move in time and stuff but for my question leading into this now would be what is something on the horizon that you wish to make maybe down the track or in the future that you uh, have you thought of yet or is it something that you might have thought about in the past that you might be working towards or mm-hmm. is there a dream or a goal that you're shooting for at the moment almost yeah I guess like short term in the next year I want to go on tour with Leon Bridges that's like a major goal of mine yeah um because I'm 23 years young so I want to travel the world I got a taste of it recently yeah. um and just realized how much I'm kind of like preparing myself mentally for what it will take uh, to be on the road. You've obviously done it. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's something that I want to experience right now. Um, and then, yeah, I guess like long term, I want to create, like, my end goal would be to create the best rom com ever in the world. Love that. Yeah, like, I can't wait to see it too. Yeah, I just like, I've, I've spoken to you about this personally, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, yeah. Um, I definitely feel like my style, and I'm, I'm quite proud to share it and say it, uh, is like, is romantic comedies. Like that is yeah. something that I, I, I definitely look at life and romanticize a lot of things. Yeah. Um, I think it's such a beautiful trait to have too, because mm-hmm. a lot of people almost look down of it as opposed to jealousy or think that it's unmanly like or whatever they want to put on towards it. But yeah, they're also like you having that feeling in that way of looking at life you know yourself mm. and I do too in, in the same perspective that they're missing out on not romanticizing their lives 100% well, like you know? I think it's just like everyone everyone longs for the feeling of love yeah like love is the most love and heartbreak is one of the most universal things that everyone experiences but sometimes it just takes certain people expressing that in unfortunate ways you know like um whether it be you know drinking or whatever yeah but yeah i'm ve- i'm just very comfortable with sharing it and knowing that like it it's universal like everyone feels it like just some people uh, communicate it in different ways and mm-hmm. i feel like i can communicate it in fun and entertaining and creative ways but yeah, back to your point about it not being very, like, historically masculine to yeah. like tap into it. It's just like I think it's um, it's interesting that whole element of like talking about your emotions, talking about all that. Um, people can often misjudge that for a lot of lot of weakness and a lot of like, um, I guess. N- and I think the only reason that they see as a weakness is that they just don't value it themselves. Yeah. I value that. That's why, like, when I, you know, uh, see someone 
like it's for example for a woman that I would you know like I, I value that you know um, and I think that's something that she would in turn value for me otherwise it wouldn't work you know exactly. but everyone's their own like unique cup like everyone's different yes. you know so like Agreed. people there's there's space for romanticizing people there's space for people who don't want to do that you know there's space for everyone so just awesome. own what you want to own yeah. and that's what I want to own <laughs> I love that that's so unique to you too and and you know I think it shines through your work the way that you capture even the way that the, the film stock you shoot with it shows so much light and there's a lot of mm. work that you were doing when you were in LA that I really appreciated that it was the golden light and mm. all of you know there's some scenes that you've done with a couple and things yeah. like that it's so beautiful but yeah, it. it's so like raw and real but it's also like still just a beautiful aspect of life that happens a lot of the time but mm it's not captured in that light or shown to us in that light. And I think you do an amazing job of that, of capturing that and also presenting it in a beautiful way that for some people looks like a romanticized version of, you know, a fairy tale life. Yeah. But you are also doing it in such unique ways that it's like, why not believe in that? Why not make that your life? You know, and yeah. that's at least what I've interpreted from seeing your work as an artist and mm. what you've began to create and move forward in from, when I first met you and what you were creating then to what you are now. Yeah, it's interesting. I've definitely tapped into that like love thing a lot more. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's something I really try and do with everything I do now. I was like, how do I, cause I feel like there's two like opposites with my work. There's like this youthful nostalgia, yep. um, which is quite like, I guess, it's universal anyone everyone's experienced that youthfulness yeah like whether it be you know on a push bike or yeah, yeah um that first love that first love where you are just obsessed with each other <laughs> you know that feeling and then there's like you know you're um skating you know surfing just all those like very youthful activities that you kind of neglect as you get older mm. um as you're told to grow up i'll never grow up <laughs> and then, there's this, and then the other line of work is like um, the the very high end stuff, mm. which is kind of like it's almost dream like, and not not everyone can actually experience that. But I like the contradiction in both. Like for example, you know, doing a photo shoot with like a crazy convertible car or something like that. Like that is almost like it's not. It, it could be sci-fi for some people yeah. or like something that's so out but I really you know appreciate that whole philosophy of um, Slim Irons yeah uh, I think every stuff yeah everyone can kind of um, appreciate that whole phenomenon of beautiful people doing beautiful things in beautiful places like mm -hmm. it's uh, something that I try and do with my work but then I also want to bring it back to like uh having that universal feeling not just focusing on that fine art one percent of yep. society i want to i want it to be universal um hence why i like dabbling in both and you know i've been in rooms where you know the ho the hollywood hills of such just being around them yep. and then also like you know being with homeless people like yeah i don't know i'm like i'm like, like i can talk to both like yeah and that's that, i think that's one thing that i always want to have as just being a fly on the wall to all of society and yeah. then just you know showcasing that it's such a beautiful thing and i think that um without really knowing what the end result could be for you or not wanting to know as well mm. um it's such a beautiful thing as a friend looking and hearing about because what could be the journey for you and what the results could be could be unmeasurable um mm. and it's exciting to see where you're going to go and where this journey will take you um, because it's already been so exciting for this short period of time, you know. Yeah. You're under a year of giving your full attention to something like this mm. and succeeded in such a beautiful space with all the work you've already created and documented and also have those beautiful achievements you're really proud of, such as Liam Bridges, which is something that people will strive for their whole career to get to, let alone within their first year of working. Mm. Um, and I think that shows a testament to you as a person, not just your craft, 
because to create that, you have to know yourself well enough to go after something like that and know that that's what you want to chase. You know, you have to have a self-belief, you have to have a self-understanding to have that mindset and that presence to create that work that you're talking about. It's not work that you are reproducing based off someone else because you were talking about feelings, not thoughts. And feelings grow from the heart, thoughts come from the mind. Mm. And feelings have to grow for them to become true and tuition as thoughts come through the brain in and out and yeah. don't grow. So, you know, for you to create that work, you felt something from his music that could have inspired you down the track, which has led you to the position that you had, that you had to do all the things in between that got you there. And um, you had to be that person to get there too. You know, you could be the same person with the same camera, with the same film stock, with the same skill, could do that work, but never get there, you know? Mm. They could be given a similar situation and never execute the same way as you. It's because of the way that you see the world and the way that you romanticize about the world and the way that you are as a person that got you there. And I think that's a testament to you. That's crazy. It's crazy when you put it like that. I was like, I was like whoa, am I actually into a psychologist right now? <laughs> Definitely not. But, um, but yeah, I think it is interesting as to, you know, um, I didn't know where I'd go with that. I didn't give you a question, <laughs> yeah, that's why. I was, I was, I was like, trying to see, keen to see what your response would be like. It's usually giving someone a douse of compliment like that is unique to see how they respond to it. And mm. it's hard to take in. I know I suck at it because when I hear someone compliment my work, I don't think as it as work. I think it is a part of me. I at yeah. least do now. I, before I did think it was part of work, but mm. you know that is part of you as well as it is your work. And I guess moving into a question here for you, what is something for you that you think that you can inspire other people from doing that you've learned? You know, so say if it's working with Leon, the experience that you might have learned that might not be the textbook skill of shooting something, it might have been the presence or the trust that you have to earn before you could have something like that. What is something in your career that you feel like that you're grateful that you learned? now or you at least have now that you didn't have at the beginning uh being the calmest in the room that's kind of something i strive for yep um and i think with having that ability to be the calmest in the room no matter how crazy the situation is is what you uh, reflect on what you just said is just mm-hmm. being super aware of yourself you need to become super aware of yourself to then understand that no matter what you are you can be calm because i feel like as a photographer and videographer your job is essentially to make someone feel comfortable enough to just freely express themselves and you can then create and and just document the way that they are Hmm. uniquely so i guess what what's really kind of catapulted me in my like head and understanding of what I try and emulate is like just literally trying to be like create movement straight away so instead of stagnant yeah like remove stagnant like let's say that you're doing a photo shoot and it starts off with them just sitting on something it's like nah how what story what's what's the story of them sitting on that chair right there yeah. like how did they get there all right, they just, you know, they just, uh, on the extreme level, they maybe just broke up with their boyfriend and they are distressed and they just need time to sit and comprehend what just happened. And then that whole movement is gonna be so different to them just sitting there and they will feel what they need to feel to express that. Yep. So then there's gonna be an element of uh, distress and it will tell this whole story towards the end. They maybe look up at the sun, and the sun's coming through right now. It's like kind of perfect. <laughs> and so they're just looking out, and it's, they're almost at ease with everything. Um, and then that, I guess that could be like a little story in there. Most um, definitely. But yeah, I guess that, that's one thing I've learned, and that's really worked for me. And I guess, um, but back to your question, 
to inspiring people or basically if, if your self was sitting here in my shoes yeah and there was something that you know now that you might not have known before that you could share that could help you get to a stage that you're at now oh yeah either easier or that you're a, you're in now and you're like i'm so glad i know this or yeah i think the biggest thing recently has been like everything will come at the right time and i know it sounds cliche but like the work that you do every day will eventually pay off so a year ago realizing that uh, beating myself up for not being where i want to be because you are your worst critic you are your harshest person like even you saying that you're like you're like how do you do that in a year for me in my head i'm just like why haven't i achieved this in a year you know certain things yeah so it's just realizing that what what i'm what i'm doing every day is just going to only compound and you can say all the quotes you want to say but like you know planting the seeds yeah it will all eventually flourish so like you know uh, for me to not to bring it back to the storyline of like Leon's story mm. I was not meant to shoot him at Sydney Opera House because my skills weren't at the level where I could have created something special where he would want to do more work with me yep. it took me going to LA to be there to be in that environment to then get that opportunity to then document and him want to work further up with me um, so things will come at the right time you know take a deep breath enjoy it do what do what you do what you love and be uniquely yourself. I mean, love that. Uh, I, I really enjoy that. Um, I think it's so true, and it's something that I have started to believe in as well. Because mm. it's exactly what you were speaking about in the Leon story. That the fact that you didn't get the Sydney job is exactly what you said was not the time for you, and it wasn't the right timing. But the fact that you got it down the track was the right timing. Because if you if you did something at Sydney and it just because he wasn't in the right mindset and he was on tour, he just didn't see the photos the right way or like you weren't at the level that you were proud of or you know they got misdeveloped or something happened. And then his interpretation of you is so different to what it is now, you know, mm. that the fact that you got and your relationship that you have with him now is because of that experience you had in LA and it's only testament that you were there finding of the whole situation that was just the universe giving you it all <laughs> literally like and yeah you can and back to that Steve Jobs quote me and my mate my old roommate we used to say all the time you can only connect the dots looking back <laughs> and like yeah. that is like the yeah the perfect representation of that for me personally and I only came to that like three weeks ago yeah realised that but obviously you know with the speed of life and daily things you can forget about it so it's a, it's a good reminder yeah I think you know if I was to get a tattoo, I'd, I'd probably get that or time off, you know? Love that. Love that. Um, I'm going to leave you with one more. Can you share your favorite Leon Bridges song? Yeah, uh, it's for sure Texas Sun. Okay. And like even the sun coming through right now, <laughs> like putting that on right now, that would be the, the ultimate. The ultimate outro. <laughs> well, thanks for your time. Thanks for coming and sitting down. And yeah. I appreciate you sharing all your knowledge and your experiences and your journey. It's been an honor to listen and uh, share it with everyone. But yeah, mate, thanks for some, Leon Bridges. Thanks for having me, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure, felt at ease and very much enjoyed this conversation. It's something that, you know, we can timestamp and look back on and obviously do one in the future sometime. And yes. I kind of laugh about this, I yeah, guess. Yeah. You know? Be like, look, you're only here. Look yeah. at you now. <laughs> I know. I think that's what the most exciting thing about these uh, podcasts and I feel like there's timestamps of where yes, you are in life exactly. and you, you actually brought that to my attention I remember right before we left uh, right before I left sorry to America you were like right down where you are at currently in your career um, so yeah grateful for that and grateful for our friendship um, to, to have um, that documented this documented and just all those little things because it's such a good question to just check in with yourself. Yeah, most definitely, and have those on record. I know that I was speaking to someone the other day about <clears throat> photo albums and mm. that what inspired me to sh first of all shoot film photography because I was a digital shooter to begin with, and I still play in film for fun. But mm. it was the fact that my mum had a film camera and I could dive into it already having a camera, and she actually shared with me when I was already two years into my career. Yeah. And that pushed me down a route to relearn skills that 
at the time a digital photographer was pretty much automated for you and you didn't have to worry about getting developed you could see whether you got the shot in that moment real time and you didn't have to like stress worry or be well prepared you know and yeah. it's just such a different app and it's such a different dance of yeah. working with film and i'm sure it's nature to you now but the people that don't either because they're too scared or afraid to dabble into it or haven't experienced shooting film or maybe they've only used a um disposable camera I don't really understand <laughs> how many things can go wrong and how stressful it can be but it was the way it was before mm. and time speaking about time stamping and stuff just having things like photo albums I don't know if you guys ever recorded those but mm. our mum used to shoot us all on a Canon 5 which is what I shoot most of my film on and um, yeah. all our photo books look sick because she had all these mad that vintage means, Canon lenses so I mean insane yeah, yeah I, don't, I think we've got some you know, in the dust, mum would always love taking photos. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think there, there would definitely be some in there. But it's funny what, like, the difference between film and digital is, you know? Like, yeah. it's massive. There's um, definitely been instances where I'm like, why am I doing film? <laughs> <You know>? Like, <laughs> even, even the cost of it, my mate just yes. shared a funny meme yesterday. He's just oh. like, the, um, he's like, this, this dog, I think it's like a Labrador, and it's just like, it looks super sad, and it's just like, Got back into film <laughs> and uh, looked at my bank account, you know? Yeah. Like, it is. That's another thing that I hope kind of re switches around because Kodak just like increased their prices by like 40%. Oh, wow. Three months ago. So you'd think with the more demand that they'd decrease it. Yeah. You know? Actually, no, that's not how economics works, is it? It, it can in a certain way that um, demand they can lower the prices because they're making more and they're making more money because you know they're selling more things but yeah. it's coming back off public demand not them mm. trying to make more sales yeah it's interesting yeah. but we'll see where it goes I think yeah but um, also the element I want to share is like uh, why I think if you're starting to become a photographer as to why you should use film yep. is utilizing the element that you've only got 36 photos and making a test of being like all right i'm going to on my walk just go for a walk once a day yep and just take one photo and instead of taking maybe 200 on a dslr you take one photo and then without you even realizing it sharpens your eye to look for moments that grab your attention and then you yeah I think that would be a cool little task. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. And I think, did you, going back to like your beginnings or when you started to do your business work, it maybe even before, did you ever set yourself tasks similar to that? I know for me, giving my, my perspective, my example, my first career kind of starting space was I made a website called Weekends and basically yeah. my friends will remember this, but um, <laughs> on a Saturday I'd go document a place yeah. And then on Sunday, I'd go to document a person and I would never make money from it. Well, I was doing it for a little while and wouldn't make any money for it, but it looked like a job. So I blogged about it. I'd go to cafes and document their menu. And then I'd go yeah. to a hotel or a local resort. And then on the Sunday, I'd document my friends and then sometimes like someone in a band and we'd do it all for free until people start, it started to gain traction. And then people thought I was getting paid the whole time because I was shooting real businesses. Yeah. and basically had this own blog that people were watching and trying to see what was the best place to go for dinner or for lunch or whatever mm. that created work for me eventually after about six to eight weeks of doing that. It's smart. But yeah, it's was smart. there anything for you that you might have created for yourself or challenges that helped inspire you to do work before you maybe had the work? Yeah, for sure. I had, they've all kind of fizzled out. Like yeah. there'd be ones where like, I'd always have like after a nightlife event, probably like, I don't know, the annoying eight or maybe 12 photos left on a roll. Yeah. And I got sick of just like, before going to the Del Vale, I was just like, sh like pressing them on the ground. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'll go into a small business and just offer them like 12, you know, photos of like their menu or something. No way. I did it once for like this company um, uh, called Pitamix in Rose Bay. Yeah. Um, Niv, the owner, he's a legend. <laughs> I ended up shooting a roll for him. I was just no like, way. I think I just got too excited. And I yeah. just like, I was like, oh, I'm always gonna roll. And then, um, but yeah, that was kind of the one that, that kind of 
catalyst. But then, to be honest with you, I just like I would go to all as many social events as I could and just take photos, even though when I wasn't the photographer there. I'd have like my contacts G1 in that purple bum bag over there and like I'd kind of be a photographer in disguise and I'd just like take photos like I remember I went to this one event um, for this brand oh I've just turned into blank Uh, her name's Helena the girl who owns it Um, Astro Resort oh yeah yeah Yeah, they're killing it she's going so well and um, I remember she was like uh, just come along and I was like, all right, I'll just, I'll take some photos and I took some photos and then I remember from that, I got a lot of work. Um, so I think that's another thing is you got to do a lot of free work in this kind of game. You do. Um, and for me, it was actually at cost because I had to obviously pay for film, pay yeah. for development. So it was in a sense, a marketing, a, it's almost like a marketing cost. That's yeah. what I kind of looked at as in yeah. my head. But also like I'm shooting film, so I'm like, I love it. And then through that, I meet models to then, I could build a relationship up to them, for them to trust me to then do a test shoot. So it all has like a positive effect if you, you know, take that leap and go out and, Mm. um, you know, try and cultivate something from a sense, nothing. Yeah, take some risk and go put some action to work so people can see what you're capable of. Exactly. Something that I speak to friends that, mm, uh, trying to get into this space or you know want to figure out how to be a creative whether it's photography or not um, how they can you know get work that they want to get paid for as opposed to what they don't have like they might do stuff for themselves but not create mm. like things that you were speaking about a similar thing where you have you were going to events and taking photos regardless of if you were getting paid or not no one knew but you were fine to do it and that's the work that you wanted and you started creating that then people saw how good your work was and like then you showed them what you're able of doing mm. without that how is everyone going to know to hire you or want to hire you if they haven't seen that you're capable of doing what you are because a lot of the people that will hire you in the future if you're starting out aren't going to be in a creative mindset to trust you or you know you won't be able to translate through words you're gonna have to show through your work you know yeah you can't just say to people hey look i love your brand I, I'm going to go take photos for you and make some videos and they go okay can you send us some examples and you have none related to that <laughs> you know you might just shoot surf photography and you're reaching out to a car company Yeah, it'd be like how are we going to bring the car into this one if you only shoot in the water mm. you know something like that but yeah I, I think that's for me as well something that helped me progress before I had work that I could then believe in it because it's like a a strategy if you want to start changing what you're shooting already you'd almost go do the same in a sense 100 percent. you just go like for example if you want to work in high fashion you go to fashion where you can shoot everything for free rock up every day mm. there's models walking outside and they all love a photo you got to remember that like you're not invading you're not doing anything wrong you are literally creating a photo for them that if you know, if they vibe with it, it's like it'll bring them a lot of happiness, which yeah. you constantly got to remind yourself because sometimes with photography and videography, you're in positions where you may not feel completely comfortable or you may like not feel invited, might feel a little bit intrusive. The best thing you can do is just remind yourself of like everyone loves a photo. You are not trying to kill someone, <laughs> you are taking a photo. <laughs> And that photo will bring people happiness. Like, mm. I think constantly, because you can get in your head about a couple like oh, things definitely. like that. Um, obviously, social anxiety can be a thing and all those other elements. But yeah, really reminding yourself that, hey, everyone loves a photo. Mm. And it's you're simple. creating out of love as well. Yeah. That's your intention. Well, it will most likely receive that way. So, yeah, you know, come with the right attitude and like understand people's personal space but yes definitely create with the, the love of act and most people will absolutely be grateful that you were there yeah it might not be at the time some yeah. people but when they see the photos the next day or whatever they'll be like posting them so exactly we know what's going on exactly <laughs> exactly like in yeah you, it's not like you're a paparazzi photographer in la like in a car and you know stalking people and yeah, yeah. privacy like yeah. you are you know, you, you're there you, you, you 
talking. And another thing is, is like when I'm tuning nightlife events, like to be honest with you, I'll talk to people more than I take photos. <laughs> yeah. like, that's another thing I don't think people realize is like I'll I might do it differently to m- most people, but I will predominantly most of the night like I'll say to them at the start of the conversation about look. If I run away from this conversation, it doesn't mean I don't like you. It's just like, I'll see a moment out of the back of my eye and I've got to run and get the photo. Yeah. You know? I kind of love that. It's they, a good offspring for them. Yeah, and they appreciate it too because they're just like, oh, cool. Like, <laughs> And the next thing you know, you see this crazy curly headed dude just running and just like <laughs> fucking getting the shot. I love it. Like, it's so fun. Like, oh, that's good. It's like, yeah. I think that's another thing is like tricking your brain into gamifying everything you know mm. turning everything into a game and um well at least for me that's what works yeah um because i know when i feel like it's work i don't i don't do my best work yeah you don't feel motivated too as well no you're not feeling inspired and when your mind's in that space you're looking at things in negative light as opposed to what it potentially could be you know i've done yeah. the same a lot where i've been like oh i don't really want to shoot this event or whatever mm-hmm. it is end up meeting someone that gives me a job down the line that I'm so grateful I got. Yeah, it's not but funny. You know, I had to be that person that was like myself at the event or whatever it was. Or, you know, or someone will say like, oh, we want to do this, blah, blah, blah. And they like undersell what they want to shoot. And then you ask like, you're like, oh, I'm not one of these or whatever. And then they send their brand and you're like, oh, I actually love these guys. Or, yeah. Like, this is sick. Like this, we could, I could take this any adventure, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had a lot of moments in Sydney last year where right before you feel like giving up or your back's up against the wall is often when your biggest or micro success at that time would be, you know? It's always a constant test. Yeah. It's like always testing you, you know? You gotta live for it. <laughs> you do, you do, and it's hard. It is hard. Yeah, it's not, it's not easy. Sometimes you're just like, oh, bed would be nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bed would be nice or like just not being in a situation that is uncomfortable, yeah. but... Yeah, just surrendering to whatever it is it, it, and uh, even realizing that everything will pass, you know? Yeah, yeah. That amazing feeling of pure, you know, love just like consuming you. Mm. It will pass. Yeah. You yeah. gotta realize that. <laughs> Most so I think when you figure that out, it definitely makes um, life, of, you know, more more bearable sounds like you're it's struggling but yeah. like it just you're just better in tune with it you can better adapt and quickly like get out of either that extreme pure euphoria or that extreme negativity yeah because it is it can go on waves oh 100 and at the end of the day it's it's almost just character building for you exactly so that when you are in a similar situation you're a lot more comfortable the next time yeah it's yeah. like or you know how to approach it differently or for me, that's something that I've pursued in my own life outside of just work. And, mm. You know, going to my local coffee shop and approaching the conversation in a different aspect or challenging because it's usually just like a struggle to start, you know? Yeah. When you go and say like morning coffee, oh yeah, just say your order and then, then you get it and then you leave, you know? There's no conversation, but you see that person a lot of the time, like most mornings, you know? And then trying to approach that in a different sense so it's so, not so mundane because going to get in a coffee was such a mundane thing, you know, and then mm. trying to start the conversation in a different way or ask a different question or figure out, it's just be like, you start to bring that into your life when you see that through your work and stuff. And when you start to believe that, it's how you shape yourself as a character. For sure. Even like weird thing was, I learned this in Hawaii when I was with my mate, Alejandro, absolute legend. <laughs> and he would, uh, whenever he would buy something at the shops or, you know, coffee or whatever. Yep. He'd look for their name tag and say, thank you, you know, for example, Cindy, you oh, know, yeah, yeah. and say the name. Yeah. And I re- it really stuck with me because people like really love to hear their name. Oh, I understand. Instead of just saying, see ya in Australia, we would say, see ya mate, catch yeah. you mate, you know, right. but like, I am saying, see ya, Alec, or hey Alec, yeah. you know, like, you know, all those things. Yeah. You think it, it also helps the person receiving it believe that that person remembered you or identifies you as a, a unique being as mm. opposed to just another worker out there supermarket or whatever they were working you know and that translates into relationships with clients with yeah. photography videography yeah. like shaking someone's hand and looking them in the eyes and saying their name and saying thank you when you're leaving you know it's mm. small things that 
I actually go extremely long way. Yeah, even I found like having those really strong connections with clients, like knowing about their own life, what stuff made them start the business if they are the owners or the creators, and you know you learn so much more about them that you can actually utilize and help them in the direction they're trying to go without them even knowing sometimes because mm. a lot of the brands aren't the creatives in the space that we are. Mm. However, if they if we know more about their story, we can help them go that way in a way that they might be more excited about as opposed to, you know, at least when I've been working with brands, a lot of them just want to do what other brands are doing because they're just starting. So they think that yeah. that's the strategy that we need. TikTok videos, we need Instagram videos, mm. but then trying to look and help them deliver them in different ways or tell them maybe you should think about doing a longer form content and then they'll be like, yeah, but everyone does short term. And you're saying that long term is better because you know you have a unique story to tell that will connect people with their audience and build a community as opposed to just sharing all this stuff that everyone else is doing because then you're not standing out and then why should they pay Fifty dollars for your shirt, as opposed to one that they're already attached to a brand's. Yeah. You know that's been there for ten years, and looking at things in that light and understanding the importance of the relationships with the client that you can build and obviously help in your skill set because it's also a mindset of being a creative too. You know, approaching their work to help them. You know, they might say that we want thirty photos with a model Dylan that has this handbag, and this is our handbag that we sell. They don't know what all the photos are gonna look like unless they say like, well, still even if they say that, like at the beach and all this stuff or whatever, or with this car, mm. but they, they might be picturing in their head exactly what they look like, but then when you deliver them, they're not gonna be exactly the same, you know? Yeah. And well, the fact that you will create them in a unique way can either benefit them in its own way if they believe it or if it's in the right light, you know? Yeah, I think that's actually another thing also is like, really being clear with the client as to your vision and that making sure that that's something that they want mm. because i think it's happened to me before where there's been two different visions and then when you go to end the final product they're not happy and that was a big learning curve and then like it, it made me so militant militant <laughs> about the fact of like making sure that we have a clear vision on what we're creating and that you actually enjoy that because if the vision's clear, then the execution has been done before, so yeah. it's fine, you know? Yeah. Um, and that just, yeah, I think that just uh, reduces unneeded stress. Oh, most definitely. And yeah. have you found through that process as well that you also get more of an input when you get better at sharing what yours is as well as theirs? Like if they say like, we want 30 photos at the beach or whatever, like I was saying, and then you say, oh, I'm thinking like we do morning light instead of, afternoon because afternoon like blah, blah blah and you share your perspective and your tell and then you can kind of like meet in the middle have you found that's worked a lot better as you've got better at doing that for sure i think it also depends on the dynamic of yeah. who reached out to who yeah so true. like if uh who's got the power yeah it's all fair um, well it's like if they reached out to you um and you have got the ability to um you can kind of get a gauge on whether someone respects you creatively, mm. I think. Maybe when you're starting out, it might be a bit difficult to read, but you can kind of yeah. read if someone respects your creativity for your style, yeah. or if they've got an agenda and they like to micromanage and they like to have full control over the creative, which is something I do not enjoy because I hate, what is it? Um, my mate said it yesterday. He said it really good. It's like having a, a backhand teacher or someone just on your shoulder. Like it's just yeah. unnecessary, and it's all out of insecurity of them not not feeling enough confidence in you. Which in turn you can give someone so much confidence, but maybe they've been fucked over before, yeah. and you yeah, know, you got to put yourself in their shoes as well. Um, and maybe be the catalyst for them having more confidence and less micromanagement but yeah i think it definitely depends on the relationship and the dynamic and a lot of things like that i don't know what your thoughts are on that no i definitely agree and for me in my part of my career now i'm moving into sets and mm -hmm. um a lot more longer form content stuff that's produced with a lot more people involved not just me I mm. used to be more more of my work used to be me have to do everything and know how to do everything which is actually a lot harder yeah. than just being the one on the camera or 
choosing the way we're going to light it and shoot it or just being the creative director and standing back which is a complete different feeling but having that understanding of people's psyche and how they're responding to basically having the experience of other clients in the past helping me experience and what you know you can get a vibe off how someone's acting on around you when you're shooting whether they want to micromanage or whether they're just trusting and they're calm and they're mm-hmm. you know happy with everything and they don't really need to see what the images look like straight away or you know aren't asking what you've got or what you haven't yeah. got you know yeah. ticking the boxes so to say because they have that trust in you yeah. and you know they have that belief and that's why they hired you or they wanted to work with you because they weren't afraid what was going to come from it just because they've seen you've done it before. Yeah. And um, I, th- I think that value of them giving that to you allows you to create your best work, as you said, you know, like, because then you're thinking about what your job is then. You're not thinking about, okay, I've got to get this and I've also got to make them happy and I've also got to explain what I'm doing mm. before I go and do the next piece. And now I've forgotten what I was going to be doing next or what I was excited about doing next, you know, it takes <laughs> away all that moment that actually literally drives the creativity as you're going. Because you can pre-prepare everything all your heart out and then get to set and everything might look completely different. Like you might be yeah. planning on shooting at the beach that morning, it might be a northerly and be windy as hell and then the hair of the model's going everywhere, the sunlight's cloudy, you know, you know so many situations like that where things aren't going to your favor, but now you're creating with a different mindset because you're in the moment. Or you might look at it and go, let's just utilize it let's embrace it you know yeah things like that and um i think that can only happen when you're in and living and breathing that moment as opposed to someone micromanaging you or yeah looking over your shoulder about everything or wanting to know everything i I remember this one set in sydney and it was like an e-com shoot for this big high fashion label yeah and i was kind of shooting behind the scenes and i just was observing the environment and I was like this is the highest form of toxic I've ever seen yeah. like you got the boss just in the back there saying like under a breath that the model needs to like have more like sex appeal and all this stuff and I'm just like this is like this is not what I want to do yeah I, I that was my first and last time ever being on like a e-com uh, shoot for a high fashion label I was like that stuff not for me. Yeah. Like, and it's just like in, out, in and out. I think they did like over 90 looks in wow. one day. Like, that's a lot. it was loose. And I was like, just observing what was going on. And I was like, this ain't for me, yeah, you know? Yeah. But I think that's another thing is like, as a young creative is to explore everything, Most try probably. everything. And the best way to do that is to be, is to say you're gonna do BTS, provide some sort of value. Yeah, yeah, yeah bring some sort of value to the table because at the end of the day, it's all a value exchange. Most definitely. With what you're doing. So when you, when you're at the start, all you got is your time to donate and your, you know, ability, whatever it may be. And yeah, yeah, just kind of studying what they're like vibing with. At at that time, everyone was kind of vibing with handicam. So I was just like, yeah, I'll shoot it on handicam. It's pretty easy for me. And yeah. I also get to see, I just wanted to see what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, of course. And that was like, that was, yeah, it was interesting and very, very like, it didn't sit well with me. I was like, flavor. no, it wasn't my flavor, but it's, it's a flavor for someone else. Oh, 100%. You know? And there's a million people who can do it. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, good on them. Most definitely. Well, yeah, I guess wrap it up there. Thanks again. Yeah, we, can, we, we, we kept we'll going because it was flying, mate. <laughs> we kept going because it was flying. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Um, big thanks to Jill. That was awesome. Yeah, that, was, that was good.